The Jurassic period is one of the most famous parts of Earth's history, and it's no surprise why. With dinosaurs roaming about and vast vegetation ruling the grounds, it seemed like the world was evolving ever so peacefully. It was like this for more than 170 million years, without much change. But one day, an event took place that would change the course of history forever. Suddenly, the ground began to rumple, the skies turned red, and an asteroid traveling at 45,000 miles per hour tore a hole in the Earth's atmosphere, causing a global supersonic shockwave. What would take place over the following seconds would completely decimate over 50% of all life forms on the planet, changing the course of history forever. This marks the end of an era and it leaves us with some major questions. What was Earth really like right before the mass extinction? Were any dinosaurs able to survive the event? And are we also at risk of a mass extinction event just like the dinosaurs experienced? Stay tuned to this special episode of Voyager as we take you back 65 million years to experience the most devastating event in Earth's history. The Cretaceous Tertiary or KT extinction event occurred 66 million years ago and this is the cause of the rapid extinction of dinosaurs after 170 million years of existence. Along with the dinosaurs, numerous other animals, amphibians and plant species also perished around the same time. Paleontologists have put up a number of hypotheses for this massive die-off over the years. One early theory postulated that small mammals consumed dinosaur eggs, causing the population of dinosaurs to decline to an unsustainable level. Another hypothesis was put out that dinosaurs became larger, their limited brains could no longer control them. Some experts thought a terrible plague wiped out the dinosaurs and then spread to the creatures that ate their corpses. Another option was starvation. Large dinosaurs could have torn their habitat's vegetation bare because they needed to eat enormous amounts of food. However, a lot of these theories can be simply disproven. Dinosaurs would not have survived for 170 million years if their brains were too tiny to adapt. Additionally, because plants lack brains and do not contract the same diseases as animals, these arguments about their concurrent demise are not possible. For a long time, climate change was the most likely cause of the extinction of the dinosaurs. The planet's perpetually wet, tropical climate was ideal for dinosaurs. But evidence suggests that the Earth gradually grew colder during the Mesozoic era, which is when the dinosaurs went extinct. Colder waters and lower temperatures led to the formation of ice over the North and South Poles. The dinosaurs couldn't have survived in considerably colder climes since they were cold-blooded, which means they got their body heat from the air and the sun. However, certain cold-blooded animal species, like crocodiles, did manage to endure. Furthermore, it would have taken tens of thousands of years for the climate to change, allowing the dinosaurs ample time to adjust. What actually happened then? Russian astronomer Joseph Shklovsky became the first researcher to think that the extinction was caused by a single cataclysmic event when he postulated that a supernova, the explosion of a dead star, would have irradiated the Earth with radiation that may have wiped out the dinosaurs. However, explaining why dinosaurs perished while other species persisted was still another issue with the notion. According to scientists, such an incident would have left traces of radiation from the Cretaceous period on the Earth's surface as proof. None were located. However, a 1980 idea put up by Nobel Prize-winning physicist Luis Walter Alvarez and his geologist son Walter claimed that an ancient layer of clay rich in iridium was produced by a sizable asteroid striking Earth. 
The abrupt extinction of the dinosaurs was believed to have been caused by the instantaneous destruction in the immediate area and the global secondary consequences of an asteroid strike. Large stony rocks called asteroids orbit the Sun. Their diameter ranges from a few to several hundred meters. A meteorite is any piece of an asteroid that survives impact on our planet. The most widely recognized idea for the catastrophic extinction at the end of the Mesozoic era is the Alvarez hypotheses, which at first cause controversy. But because the crater has been located, there is strong evidence that an asteroid impact occurred. It is now mostly submerged in the ocean floor off the coast of Mexico. It is precisely the same age as the non-bird dinosaur extinction, which has been documented in rock records all around the planet. The Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico serves as the focal point for the impact site, also known as the Chicxulub Crater. Thought to have been between 10 and 15 kilometers broad, the asteroid's speed during the encounter created the second largest crater on the planet. The crash that killed the dinosaurs threw massive amounts of debris into the air and enormous tidal waves washed portions of the American continents. There is additional proof that there were significant fires at that time. At the same event, around 75% of all species on Earth, including dinosaurs, suddenly perished. So, how did a rock crashing into Central America's coast trigger it all? The asteroid vaporized as it approached Earth at a high speed of roughly 40,000 miles, that's 64,000 kilometers per hour, taking the form of a fireball much larger and brighter than the sun flying through the sky. The asteroid struck Earth a split second later with an explosion equivalent to more than 100 trillion tons of TNT. The impact created a crater more than 115 miles that's 185 kilometers across and vaporized thousands of cubic miles of rock by penetrating the Earth's crust at a depth of several miles. The incident triggers a series of worldwide calamities that kill most of the dinosaurs and almost 75% of other life on Earth. The immediate area was completely destroyed since the asteroid left a massive crater. A massive blast wave and heat wave were released, both of which launched enormous amounts of debris into the atmosphere. Some of the ejecta managed to escape the gravity of Earth and enter erratic orbits around the Sun. Over the course of millions of years, pieces of it traveled to other solar system planets and moons. The debris eventually covered Mars, much as chunks of Mars that were propelled into space by ancient asteroid collisions have been discovered on Earth. According to a 2013 study published in the journal Astrobiology, tens of thousands of pounds of impact debris may have landed on Titan, a moon of Saturn, as well as on Europa and Callisto, satellites that circle Jupiter and may have potential as home planets for life. According to mathematical simulations, some of this roving debris still included living bacteria. Even as it devastated life on Earth, the asteroid may have planted life throughout the solar system. A silver lining in the dark clouds? On impact with Earth, the asteroid exploded into flames. Its material combined with melted rock from the Earth to generate a blazing plume that extended halfway to the Moon before collapsing into a pillar of flaming dust. According to computer simulations, the debris storm heated the air within 1,500 miles of ground zero, starting massive forest fires. As it turned, the flying material converging at the opposite side of the Earth caused it to fall and ignites the whole Indian subcontinent. 70% of the world's woods were destroyed by flames, according to the measurements of the layer ash and the soot that eventually covered the Earth. Meanwhile, the impact's massive tsunamis tore up coasts, 
sometimes scraping away hundreds of feet of rock, pushing debris inland, then sucked it back out into deep water, creating jumbled deposits that oil men occasionally uncover during deep sea drilling. The planet itself turned toxic. A trillion tons of carbon dioxide, 10 billion tons of methane, and 1 billion tons of carbon monoxide were released into the atmosphere when the asteroid struck, vaporizing layers of limestone. All three of these gases are potent greenhouse gases. Additionally, the impact melted anhydrite rock, ejecting 10 trillion tons of sulfur compounds into space. Sulfur and water combined to make sulfuric acid which then dispersed as acid rain and may have had sufficient strength to peel the leaves from any remaining plants and leach the soil's nutrients. Many of the details which are inferred from computer models, field observations of the debris layer, knowledge of extinction rates, fossils and microfossils, and several other indicators are still up for debate among scientists. However, the overall picture is consistently bleak. For months, no sunlight was able to reach the planet's surface due to the impact's dust and smoke, as well as the conflagrations. The vast majority of plants died, the oceanic phytoplankton died, and the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere decreased as photosyntheses all but ceased. Earth was literally on fire. Each feral became an incandescent torch as it fell, rapidly and dramatically heating the air. The majority of dinosaurs and many other terrestrial species could not have escaped it because they were neither aquatic nor underground. Animals trapped in the open may have perished from the prolonged hours of high heat and in certain areas the relentless blast was enough to ignite dried out vegetation and start wildfires. Much of the Cretaceous life was wiped out in a couple of hours, at least on land. The diversity of life was drastically reduced by the heat pulse and its after effects alone. However, the harm had only started and things got far worse. The organisms that had endured the extreme heats and fires now confronted a new danger. Following the fire's extinguishment, Earth experienced a period of extreme cold, possibly even a deep freeze. Both the land-based and aquatic food systems on Earth fell apart. This led to the collapse of the ecosystem, like a series of dominoes further up the food chain. The decline in plant life significantly influenced herbivore survival, which in turn caused carnivores to suffer from a lack of food. There were harsher conditions and shorter breeding seasons. Unsurprisingly, all life was impacted in some way, on land and in the ocean. Approximately 75% of all species died. The carbon cycle stopped. The specific lethal mechanism and the length of that time have been a subject of much debate. There are still many unanswered questions. However, it was a significant occurrence that had an impact on every form of life on Earth, from microscopic organisms to dinosaurs. There were numerous casualties. Ammonites, a few minuscule planktons and huge marine reptiles all perished among them. However, the defeat paved way for the development of the contemporary world. What withstood the asteroid strike? Plants were less impacted than animals during the Cretaceous extinction event because their seeds and pollen could endure harsh conditions for a longer period. Following the demise of the dinosaurs, flowering plants took over, continuing a process that began during the Cretaceous period and is still going strong now. However, anything weighing more than 25 kilograms on land became extinct. The only thing we had left was essentially the seeds of the present. Although all of the major animal groupings that are still in existence today existed before the asteroid hit, 
and all of them experience some degree of extinction, the genetic lines that gave rise to contemporary creatures were able to survive. Dinosaurs that weren't birds all perished, but dinosaurs that were birds survived. Although some bird species became extinct, today's birds' ancestors continued to exist. Initially, the survivors were small, with birds the first to experience evolution to larger sizes. The Oligocene Epoch, which began about 15 million years after the non-avian dinosaurs ceased to exist, is when we first began to develop truly enormous mammals. At this point, rhino-sized creatures start to return. But before that, the planet was populated by tiny creatures, especially in comparison to the dinosaurs that existed before them. For some time, bodily size lagged. The biggest land animals to have ever existed were still dinosaurs. Whales are the only animals to have ever surpassed them in size. Could the dinosaurs have survived? According to studies, the fate of life on Earth would have been quite different if the impact had taken place somewhere else on the globe. The asteroid would have landed in deeper water if it had fallen just a few minutes later and less rock would have vaporized and rose to block the sun's light and warmth. As a result, there would have been less risk of mass extinction. If the dinosaur's reign hadn't been abruptly ended by an asteroid, we might have seen some other than birds still around today. Some of them might still exist. The last 10 million years of their rule are mostly unknown to us and the little we do know is restricted to Western North America. The last non-bird dinosaurs, like the Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus, are well documented. However, it appears from that region of the world that although dinosaur populations were increasing, the variety of dinosaur species was decreasing. It's still a great mystery as to whether that pattern applied elsewhere. On the other hand, had the asteroid not struck, dinosaurs might have lived a little while longer though. Given the emergence of modern birds, mammals and reptiles, they might not have dominated as much as they once did. More so, the asteroid cannot be held fully responsible. Earth was going through a phase of climate change prior to its crash landing, and this makes things more difficult for life on the planet. In what is now central India, there was substantial volcanic activity that, although unrelated to the asteroid impact, was causing problems of its own. The resulting lava outcrop is now known as the Deccan Traps. A significant quantity of volcanic activity persisted for two million years, releasing gases into the atmosphere and significantly altering the climate on a worldwide scale. Longer-term modifications were also present. The continents were moving about and breaking apart, which led to the creation of larger oceans, which altered global patterns of the ocean and atmosphere. The temperature and vegetation were also significantly impacted by this. The last dinosaurs that weren't birds were alive during a time when the ecosystem was changing, some of which started millions of years before they vanished. The asteroid only delivered the decisive blow. Did you know that the KT extinction was neither the first nor the biggest mass extinction in history? The Permian-Triassic extinction catastrophe, often known as the Great Dying, occurred some 252 million years ago and wiped out 70% of all terrestrial vertebrate species and 96% of all marine species. It's possible that what will destroy humanity is waiting somewhere in the universe for the appropriate moment to strike. It might also be hiding inside of us. Who knows, we might be the cause of our very own demise. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.